What an interesting Monday, folks. We got the formal announcement for Triple G versus Canelo, part three. Alicia Baumgartner and Michaela Mayer are finally going to have that undisputed title fight. And then, of course, Tank Davis calls Devin Haney the email champ and says, come get it. Let's chop this up. What's up with it, fam? It's Hot Boxing Minute, your favorite pharmaceutical engineer, turn boxing analyst, back at you with that what? That raw, that uncut, that straight up got it out the mud realness because that's the only way I know how to bring it. Now, we were all excited going into the start of the week. We've got we got the uh, Roly fight versus Tank, or actually since Tank is the champion, we were talking about Tank versus Roly, and that was the big rollout news event for the week. And just this Monday, so much went down in just this one day. We get Triple G versus Canelo finally getting formally announced. Michael Coppinger broke the news. Mike, Mike Coppinger, Michael Benson, whatever you want to call them, Mike and Michael both dropped the news also. It lit up the online world and essentially took a lot of the wind out of the sails of that Tank Roly fight. But the Tank Roly fight is still hot subject too. Don't get it twisted. Let me tell you folks, I have been talking about this Triple G Canelo trilogy fight for a while now. It may not be the most popular idea amongst the critics, but this isn't about the critics. This is about the fans. This is about what makes financial sense because what? Boxing is a business. There is no way around this, folks. There is no way around this. Now, prior to doing the DAZN deal for the two to three fight deal, I heard it was two fights. Now I'm hearing it might have been three fights. But that two-fight deal, when Canelo first went into it, included that shot at Dimitri Bivol and the trilogy fight with Canelo with um, with Triple G. So now we got Canelo. He got that loss to Bivol. He said immediately after the fight that he was mulling over the idea about possibly getting a rematch. And I'm glad he thought about it. I'm glad he thought against it and didn't let foolish pride get the best of him because I don't think at the present moment that Canelo Alvarez should jump right back into a fight with Dimitri Bivol because Dimitri Bivol kind of got him. I'd say easily 9-3 to three at the very least in that fight that they had. And they made the formal announcement today. Triple G, trilogy fight, and people are upset. You already know you've got conflicting fanboy arguments going on. There's a lot of people that are upset about Triple G getting the trilogy fight. Now, I don't really understand why people are so upset about Triple G and Canelo doing a third fight. You've got a for sure first ballot Hall of Famer in Triple G. A current unified middleweight champion coming off back-to-back -back knockout wins. And the critics, I guess, would rather have him fight some maybe Hall of Famers. Emphasis on maybe, because we don't really know how David Benavidez or Jamal Charlo's career are going to advance from this point forward. That's no, you know, besmirching of their good names. But when push comes to shove, in the end, the Wikipedia books are going to see the historic run of Triple G when they look up the footnote on this fight that he's having with Canelo Alvarez. Legacy is a big deal, folks. Now... We can talk about Jamal Charlo and what his accolades are, which aren't really much. He has one belt at 160. We can talk about David Benavidez, the boogeyman, so-called the monster at 168. David Benavidez looks sharp and crispy, but David Benavidez doesn't really have a title. And at the present moment, just looking at it logically, David Benavidez is far too dangerous, too high risk, and not enough reward. Now, you really got to take it into consideration. When people are talking about Triple G, no, I'm sorry. When people are talking about Canelo and David Benavidez, there's a risk and a reward factor to this. David Benavidez doesn't have any straps. It's an extraordinarily high risk fight for Canelo. Now your average person going to work every day isn't gonna work a lot harder for less pay. That's just not how anyone works. Boxing fans have to stop being so unfair demanding that fighters work way harder than they need to to make less pay. There's far more money involved in a third fight with Triple G than there is David Benavidez at the present moment. That's just how it is. I don't write the rules to this. Don't kill the messenger. Boxing community. I don't know about the rest of these critics, but I am absolutely gassed up about the idea of Triple G versus Canelo 3. Triple G's social media following alone is essentially larger than David Benavidez and Jamal Charlo's. Combined. Like, what are we talking about? Triple G is an international commodity. Jamal Charlo and David Benavidez, for all intents and purposes, are not known outside of the U.S. to the international boxing community. Triple G, actually, believe it or not, has an amount of star power that exists outside the general boxing world. There are casual sports fans and very surface observers of the sport of boxing who know who Triple G is, but don't know who David Benavidez is and don't know who Jamal Charlo is. 
Don't kill the messenger. That's just how it is. That's what happens when you've been in the game as long as Triple G has, when you've been knocking out people left and right the way Triple G has, and when you've had the legendary back-to-back -back fights with Canelo Alvarez the way Triple G has. Now, just because the man is 40 years old doesn't mean you can tear apart his legacy of what he's built so far. The man's coming off of back-to-back -back knockout wins. Now, there's a lot of people who are mad saying Triple G is 40 years old. Oh, he's over the hill. He just won a belt off of Ryota Murata. He beat a champion. Yes, he got a little bit of resistance from Ryota Murata, but anybody in a championship fight against another champion will receive resistance. Didn't matter. He still knocked him out. All of a sudden, KOs aren't valid anymore. Welcome to the wonderful world of online boxing comment sections, folks. Not much of it makes sense. So... We got that fight. It looks like it's going to be on September 17th. Now, I'm not really sure where I... Actually, I know where I lean. I think Canelo Alvarez is going to end up knocking out Triple G. But I think maybe that might be a little bit of my induced bias from seeing everybody say Triple G is washed. I don't know for sure if Canelo will knock him out. What would happen to the boxing world if somehow, some way on September 17th, Triple G knocks out Canelo? The whole multiverse would collapse on itself. Not saying that's going to happen, but very interesting things to ponder. Now, let's move on to the next subject of the news that broke today. We just went over Triple G and Canelo 3. Alicia Baumgartner and Michaela Mayer finally announced that they've signed the contracts and they're, they're, they're looking towards late summer, early fall to get this awesome undisputed title fight. Now, for those of you boxing fans who may not be hardcore followers of the sport or maybe don't keep up on women's boxing, Listen, folks, for those of you not keeping up on women's boxing, Michaela Mayer and Alicia Baumgartner easily have the best boxer feud going on in all of boxing, men or women. Those two have been going at it in the comment sections on Twitter now ever since Alicia Baumgartner turned Terry Harper into a zombie and won her title. And it's one of the most fascinating feuds going on on all of social media. It really is. Those two do not like each other. It is very sincere. And uh, they're both phenomenally talented. Obviously, we got Michaela Mayer with a deep amateur pedigree. Well, guess what? Alicia Bumgardner also has a deep amateur pedigree. We know that, you know, Michaela Mayer definitely has been in her fair share of dogfights. She's a great technician, fights well on the front foot, fights on the back foot. She can get in the trenches and fight like a dog. And then you got Alicia Bumgardner, who is freakishly athletic, has great precision, great accuracy in her shot selection, and has that one thing, oh, that beautiful thing called power. Oh, she'll knock a chick out. And it's so much fun to see it when you see it in the ring, to see somebody who has that kind of power. Anyways, I am definitely looking forward to... <clears throat> excuse me. Sorry, you guys. I get dehydrated when I'm speaking. My throat gets dry, uh, especially since I'm done training. Anyways, I can't tell you how excited I am about the idea of Alicia Baumgartner and Michaela Mayer finally having this undisputed fight. These two have been going at it on Twitter ever since... Alicia Baumgartner won the title, and this is definitely going to be another women's super fight. It's great for women's boxing. It's great for boxing as a whole. And um, I don't know who I favor in that fight. I, I really like Alicia Baumgartner for the simple fact that, uh, you know, she's got that what if. She's got that bomb in her right hand, but you can't knock Michaela Mayer's pedigree. All right. So now that I broke the news about those two, what do you guys think about Alicia Baumgartner and Michaela Mayer, y'all? I want to see your thoughts in the comment section. Who do you think wins in this matchup? Who is the better trash talker? If you've been following the feud on Twitter, let me know. The last thing I wanted to talk about was a recent interview involving Tank Davis and Brian Custer. I just saw the footage today where essentially, you know, um, Devin Haney was, uh, you know, kind of taking shots at Javante Davis and Javante Davis responded with Devin Haney essentially calling him an email champion. And he said, after you're done with George Cambosis, come holler at me about it and let's run it. And woo -hoo -hoo, I like the idea of Devin Haney versus Tank Javante Davis. Uh, don't know who I would lean more towards. Clearly, Javante Davis has a lot more power. I think one could venture to say that Devin Haney probably has more sheer technical ability as far as being a boxer boxer, but Tank Davis has shown, especially in that most recent fight with Isak Cruz, that he definitely has boxing pedigree and is capable of getting technical if need be. Anyways, I love the idea of Devin Haney and Tank Javante Davis going at it back and forth. 
It keeps the sport healthy. It keeps fans watching. I am not one of these purists that's going to be mad at what's going on in the Twitter and the IG comment sections and stuff. I love when fighters clap back at each other. It makes everything more interesting. It gives us stuff to talk about. And yeah, I want to see Devin Haney and Tank, after all the smoke is settled with their current fight affairs that they have on their docket, possibly facing each other. That would be awesome. Say Devin Haney actually beats George Cambosis in back-to-back fights to become the undisputed lightweight champion, only to go right into a fight with Tank Gervonta Davis. Gervonta Davis is about to leave his contract with Floyd Mayweather. That's another big news article that broke too, folks. After this fight with Roley Romero, Tank Davis is going to officially be a free agent. I think he's done with Floyd Mayweather's narcissistic approach to managing, and he doesn't want to have Floyd Mayweather undermining him essentially and trying to steal his shine, which I don't think Floyd Mayweather should be trying to do for a young talent that's in his roster. It really is unusual behavior. Anyways, folks, I think, you know, I think Tank Gervonta Davis has a lot of interesting decisions ahead of him after the Roley Romero fight because he's not going to be re-signing with Mayweather Promotions. He might just be a free agent and only sign broadcasting deals for one or two fights, you know, with specific platforms, you know, like DAZN or, say, Showtime, much like the way that, you know, Canelo Alvarez or Boots Ennis is doing right now. Maybe he signs a contract with Top Rank and Bob Arum. Maybe he signs with Matchroom Boxing or even PBC. The sky's the limit for Tank Davis. What do you think he does after this Roley fight, folks? Let me know in the comments section. Anyways, y'all, that's going to be it for this video. Hit the thumbs up. Drop a comment or a suggestion in the comment box, y'all. Are you not already hitting follow? Anyways, this is Hot Boxing Minute, the future of boxing analysis on social media.